So the purpose of this lecture is to do a little bit of a math review before we get back to physics. So the next physical system I want to discuss is a, a damped harmonic oscillator but being driven by some external force. So um, that's like you take a mass on a spring and you start jostling it with some external force. And it turns out that the math for that kind of equation is what we call a linear inhomogeneous ODE. So we haven't yet encountered inhomogeneous ODEs. Here's an example of one written there. And the inhomogeneous part is this part here. So in all the examples we've done before, this side has been equal to zero, but now it might be equal to some other function f. And so we need to learn the techniques on how to solve these kinds of equations. So we're going to take a little bit of a review of math to remind you how to solve those kinds of equations. You have to be uh, familiar with a way to guess particular what are called particular solutions of these equations, so we'll learn how to do that. And then I'm going to teach you a new technique called complexification, which is uh, a way to make problems that have trig functions in them a bit easier by turning them into complex exponentials. So that's the plan. And then once we finish this math review, the next lecture we'll talk about going back to the physical system of the harmonic oscillator, which is being driven at some uh, with some external force. So this might be a bit of review. Here's uh, the steps to solve a second order linear inhomogeneous ordinary differential equation. So the inhomogeneous part is uh, new to us. So those equations look something like this, y double dot plus some function here, y dot of t plus, uh, or maybe I'm, I'm usually just not including the t dependence, so y dot plus uh, b of t times y of t is equal to some function f of t. That's the inhomogeneous part here. So this here is the inhomogeneous part. Okay, here are the steps. First step is find the general solution to the homogeneous part. That's when f of t is equal to zero. And we have learned some techniques for how to do that. So for example, um, you're going to find two solutions, y1 h of t and y2 h of t are the linearly two linearly independent solutions. And then my general solution will be yh, let's call it the solution to the homogeneous part, will be arbitrary constants times uh, those solutions, y1h of t plus uh, b y2h of t. So that's, uh, you solve the homogeneous part just the same as you normally would. Now comes the new part. You somehow, and I have to tell you how, or at least how to try, but for now, somehow, you find a solution, find one single solution um, with uh, f of t not equal to zero. So to the full inhomogeneous equation. We call this a particular solution. So it's some solution that solves the full thing. It doesn't have to be a general solution, it just has to be some, somehow I found one function which satisfies the full inhomogeneous equation. So we call this yp, particular, p stands for particular. And then the claim is the general solution is uh, y of t is the homogeneous part, so a times y1h of t plus b y2h of t. So you take the homogeneous solution, whoops, y2h of t, 
And all you do is you add yp to it. So to get your general solution, you take the solution to the homogeneous part and you add that one particular solution that you found. And that will, that will do it. That's the claim. And I'm not going to prove it to you. Um, you can find that proof in math textbooks or in your math courses. So I'm just going to take my word for it and we'll do some examples to practice this. So here's a simple example of an inhomogeneous equation, second order linear inhomogeneous equation. Find the general solution to y double dot plus 3y dot plus 2y equals 8. Okay, so let's do these steps. So first find the general solution to the homogeneous equation. So this part is going to review, be review, and I'm just going to go through it very quickly. So I'm just, the homogeneous equation is this one, plus 3y dot plus 2y equals 0. So that's where the only, all the terms have y's in them. Okay, so this part you know how to do. You guess y is e to the rt, and you find the characteristic equation, and then you um, get those two solutions. So let me do that very quickly. So there's the solution to the homogeneous equation. Now we need to somehow guess or determine the particular solution, or a particular solution. A particular solution. We need to determine a particular solution, uh, yp of t. And we need to somehow find this. And uh, this takes some practice, so you just have to kind of learn what to guess. And in this case, I've learned that if the thing on the right side is a constant, uh, a good guess is to guess a constant. So let's try to guess a constant. So let's guess yp of t is equal to, uh, let's call it uh, k, I guess. So plug it in, uh, yp dot is 0 and yp double dot is equal to 0. So plugging it into the ODE is really easy. I just get 0 plus 3 times 0 plus uh, 2 times k is equal to 8, which means that I get k is equal to 4. So I found a particular solution, yp of t is equal to 4, is a particular solution to this ODE. So we have the homogeneous solution, and we found this particular solution by learning what to guess. I guessed a constant, and that worked. And sometimes you might guess something and it doesn't work, and then you have to guess something else. And I'll, in the next slide, I'll talk about strategies for what to guess. So that means now in this case, we can put together the general solution, y of t. It's the homogeneous piece, so a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 2t, and then you add the particular solution 4. So you take your homogeneous piece, and you add the particular solution to it, and then you're done. That's the general solution. And I did it in the lecture notes. I won't do it here, but you can do it as an exercise at home. Check it. So check it. Plug it back into the ODE, make sure it works. And uh, then you're, you've got two arbitrary constants, A and B. So it satisfies the ODE. There's two arbitrary constants, so that means it must be the general solution. And so you're done. OK, so the, the question is how to really determine this particular solution if I have a, a second order o, inhomogeneous ODE like is shown there. Basically, you have to learn how to guess something. So it's just a matter of guessing. And um, I'm just going to give a general rule of thumb, which is that you, the form of your guess should be of a similar form to what shows up on the right side. So your guess should be of a similar form to f of t. 
So in the previous example, we had uh, f of t was a constant. Then we take a guess why p of t is equal to a constant, right? We said it was k. And that turned out to work. Let's do a couple other examples. So how about this one? Consider this equation, y double dot plus 3y dot plus 2y is equal to e to the 3t. So now the thing on the right side here is e to the 3t. It's not a constant. So which of these would be a good guess to try to find a particular solution? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can determine or think about which one of these might be the best answer. Okay, did you decide on one of the answers? The way to do it, I mean, the way that I kind of think about these is you'd have to try to start doing, getting good at doing derivatives in your head. So let, suppose you tried a constant again. So let's suppose I tried uh, a. Well, then I would end up with yp dot is equal to zero and yp double dot was equal to zero. And my equation would look something like this. Two times a is equal to e to the three t. And this cannot be satisfied because a is supposed to be a constant. The left-hand side is a constant, but the right-hand side depends on t. So that's not going to work. Right? So guessing a constant doesn't work because then the left side is completely constant, but the right side can't be constant. So that doesn't work. How about something like maybe you tried doing this one, cosine of bt. Well, think about what do those derivatives look like? yp dot is going to be something like a sine of bt, and yp double dot is going to be equal to something like a cosine of bt. So I'm trying to do it kind of sketchily and quickly in my head. So the derivatives of y give me sines and cosines. So when I plug it into my ODE, what I'm going to get is something on this side, which is going to have sine of, three, of bt uh, plus cosine of bt. I'm going to have terms with sines and cosines. And then the, the right side is going to be equal to e to the 3t. And how is that supposed to work? I mean, e to the 3t can't be written in terms of sines and cosines. So that's not going to work either. So that's why I'm saying you have to match the right side, your guess to the right side. If my guess is completely different than the right side, when I plug it in, I'm not going to get anything that looks like the right side, so it won't be equal. Okay. So I'm stuck with the things that look the most like the right side are these two, d and e. So they both have e to the 3t in them. And it's going to turn out that uh, this one will be correct. And let's see how it works. So let me plug it in. OK. So I plugged it in. And you see what happens is that every term has an e to the 3t in it on the left side and on the right side. and all of those cancel out. And I'm left with a single equation which looks like, I guess in this case, 20a is equal to 1. And so I can solve this with a being a constant 1 over 20. So my particular solution, yp, is going to be equal to 1 over 20 times e to the 3t. Okay, so that worked. I, I, it worked because I chose my guess to match the form of the right-hand side. So if you have a constant on the right side, guess a constant. If you have an exponential on the right-hand side, guess an exponential. That's the, the main idea. Here's some extra practice for you. So here's a yet a third equation. The left side is the same, y double dot plus 3y dot plus 2y. And this time the right-hand side is plus 6t, sorry, equals 6t. So suppose you're trying to find a particular solution to this equation. Which of these would be a good thing to guess? See if you can work it out for yourself. Um, uh, so first of all, 
pause the video, see if you can choose, uh, decide on which one of these choices is best. And then as an extra uh, exercise for you, try to determine the exact particular solution based on your guess. And if you can't decide one of these, whether one of these guesses is right or not, uh, just try them out and you'll see that actually only one of these will work. And I think trying them out and seeing which ones work and which ones don't is actually a really good learning process. So give that a try. It's a take-home exercise for you.